This for me is only stage one. It's gathering the raw materials, uh, which is constant throughout my practice. And I think constant throughout the practice of science as well. It's all about how we generate the questions, how we approach the questions, how they highlight gaps in our knowledge. The next step is how do I take all of this and how do I communicate that to the wider world? The title of the um, project is The Taken Path. This is kind of a speculative, open-ended, durational project that encompasses all those intricate, delicately balanced inter interrelationships. And it all hinges on a very poetic idea. What if I were to walk the same path once a month over a year and film the journey? Think about how you observe a path that you travel every day that's so familiar to you that it's become invisible. I've been based here at Carrick Hill, which is a kind of an iconic estate in Adelaide, for over a year now, looking at the relationships between plants and humans. The path that bisects the estate that goes from the west right up through to the east this long path with a house in the middle traverses a number of different kinds of landscapes. Uh, landscapes that are highly managed and landscapes that are more unstructured. Got a rim of endangered grey box grassy woodland. And then there's this kind of big area that I call crunchy zone because in summer the sound of your footfalls on that bit of land is absolutely audible. And when it shifts into another season, the sound changes too. I've been noticing all these changes uh, across the seasons in my time here, which is why I've developed this project hanging on the pathway. So it's a perfect place for a project like this. The process is the mediating layer between me and the subject matter. We're using an iPhone, digital camera and a video camera to just simply walk that path, holding the device in a particular way. Every time we walk in one direction and then back, out from the house, trying not to judge whatever happens along those paths, we allow. It's been extraordinary, particularly uh, the conceptual kind of unfolding things we, we don't notice in our everyday lives. It's forced me to kind of step back from forcing a concept in a body of work, of allowing the concepts to arise, being a lesson I should have learned years ago, perhaps. This place is meant to be an oasis. When people come here, they think it's almost always been like this. I come on the days when there are no visitors here and that's when the machinery moves in. <laughs> it's almost like being behind the curtains on a theatre set. And what's been so shocking is the realisation of how much we have impacted the, the land, the original land. Understanding that this land, every corner of it has been disturbed by humans. What's incredibly important to this process for me is collaboration. I'm collaborating with Ian Gibbons, an emeritus professor of anatomy and a neuroscientist who's now a renowned video poet. So he brings some incredible kind of insights into this project. So that process for me is really important to actually cross disciplines, cross fields of knowledge. Working across disciplines has given me insight into how I can bring other opinions, other ways of seeing, connecting our languages together so we see something anew. If we all just step back from the tenets of the tradition embedded in our disciplines, that maybe we'll begin to see things differently and maybe we can come up with new solutions to achieving a better balance with the natural world. My big picture thinking is to question tradition, to try and free up new perspectives on things that we think we are already familiar with, that we already know because we don't know them.